Curry and Eric Richen seem to have everything. A nine-year marriage, three sons, thriving careers, and a comfortable home in Camas, Utah. However, when Eric, the owner of a prosperous masonry business, tragically passed away from fentanyl poisoning at 39 on March 3, 2022, authorities in Summit County started to unveil a less ideal picture of the family. Authorities in 2023 charged Curie, now 35, with aggravated murder and drug possession, alleging she poisoned Eric with the illicit drug as a means to collect millions in life insurance funds. The same night Eric died, authorities say he, Curie, and her mother, Lisa Darden, were celebrating Curie's recent closure on a $2 million mansion under construction in Wasatch County. The feminist 33-year-old, who owned a real estate company, wanted to finish building the mansion and sell it for a profit. A warrant states, after her husband's death, Curie went on to write and sell a children's book about a father's death titled, Are You With Me? Now, a recently unsealed search warrant reveals what could be an even darker picture of the family. In May 2023, a detective from the Summit County Sheriff's Office filed a search warrant affidavit suggesting that Darden might have been involved in planning Eric's death, citing her connection to a suspicious death in 2006. According to the detective, in 2006, Lisa Darden, the mother of Corey Richens, was living with a woman with whom she had a romantic relationship. The partner died unexpectedly in April of that year, with an autopsy revealing the cause of death as a drug poisoning from an overdose of oxycodone. Darden had recently been named as the beneficiary of her partner's estate. The detective believed that the circumstances, including the partner's ongoing prescription for oxycodone and struggles with medication abuse, made it unlikely that the overdose was accidental. The detective also noted Darden's close relationship with her daughter and her proximity to the suspicious death, suggesting the possibility of her involvement in planning Eric's death. Sky Lazaro, representing Corey Richens, refuted the detective's suggestion, attributing the partner's death to the national opioid crisis. Lazaro pointed to statistics from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, indicating the prevalence of opioid-related overdoses, emphasizing that Darden's partner was a victim of this crisis. Lazaro continued by stating that Summit County was the first in Utah to sue big pharma opioid manufacturers and distributors. In 2022, Park City Police, the Summit County Sheriff, Summit County Attorney, and Park City School District jointly warned citizens about the increasing presence of fentanyl, a drug contributing to a surge in accidental overdoses nationwide. Lazaro mentioned that his partner was one of millions affected by opioid addiction, which sadly led to their demise. He emphasized that this situation was not uncommon, but rather tragic and widespread. In a November 2023 interview with ABC's Good Morning America, Darden defended her daughter's innocence vehemently. She expressed disbelief that Curry could harm Eric or anyone else, emphasizing their deep love and happiness as a couple. However, court documents suggest a different narrative. Prosecutors claim that Corey bought four separate life insurance policies worth over $1.9 million on Eric's life between 2015 and 2017. According to court documents, Eric Richens' estate planning attorney, Crystal Bowman Carter, mentioned that Eric made several unusual choices regarding his estate plan before his sudden death. These choices included removing Curie from his will and naming his sister and father as beneficiaries instead. According to his family, he feared for his life because Curie allegedly attempted to poison him in Greece and again on Valentine's Day in 2022. In 2020, Eric discussed his estate planning with Bowman Carter. During their meeting, he outlined two main objectives. Firstly, he aimed to safeguard himself from ongoing financial abuse by his wife, Curie Richens. Secondly, he wanted to ensure that his three sons, whom he shared with Curie, would be protected in the long term by preventing Curie from managing his property after his passing. Eric believed that appointing someone other than his wife to handle his property posthumously would shield his sons from Curie's potentially detrimental financial decisions. He specified that, while he wanted his children to be the main beneficiaries of his estate. Corey should only receive the minimum required amount and should have no control over her or her children's share of the estate. As a result, he chose his sister and father as his successor trustees. On January 1, 2022, months before Eric's death, Corey secretly changed the beneficiary for his $2 million life insurance policy to herself without his permission. Eric was notified of the change and switched the beneficiary back to his business partner. Three months later, Corey allegedly spiked her husband's Moscow mule with fentanyl, a deadly opioid, while they were celebrating her purchase of the $2 million Wasatch County mansion. This mansion had been a source of disagreement between the couple. The next day, Curie allegedly closed the deal on the mansion alone after her husband was pronounced dead.
Sky Lazaro, Curry's defense attorney in the murder case, argued during a bail hearing last summer that making poor financial decisions doesn't equate to being a murderer. When authorities reached out to Bowman Carter to clarify Eric's will details to Curry, the lawyer reported that the defendant reacted strongly, becoming upset and yelling. Curry exclaimed, what's wrong with you people? And how could you do this to me? While insisting, this is my house, Bowman Carter explained that the trust owned the house, firmly stating, this is not your house. Do you believe Corey Richens is guilty of the murder of her husband, Eric Richens? Or do you think there's a possibility she's innocent? Comment below the right answer. Thank you for watching. Please hit that subscribe button and the like button.